Frontier Town, the saga of the Roaring West. Frontier Town. El Paso, Cheyenne, Powder River, Tombstone. Frontier Town. Here is the adventurous story of the early West. The tamed and untamed from Cheyenne to Calgary, from Dodge City to Poker Flat. These are the towns they fought to live in and lived to fight for. Taming crucibles of freedom. Frontier Town! Frontier town, huh? Yes, I guess that's what most folks would call Dos Rios. A frontier town. Loud and lusty. Tough and tumbling like a score of other frontier towns. El Paso, Cheyenne, Tombstone. The only difference probably is the name of the town. Dos Rios, that's Spanish for two rivers. My name is Remington. Chad Remington. Born in Dos Rios 20-odd years ago. And reared there until I went upstate to school to study law. And I wouldn't have come back, I guess, if I hadn't gotten word that my father was found murdered. Murdered in cold blood. So I threw a few things into a carpet bag. Took the first stagecoach out of Denver. And then stretched my long legs by walking the familiar rutted street past the stores with the false fronts. And a half dozen saloons. Over to the white Dolby house that belongs to Judge Fillmore and his daughter Libby. I thought Father should have written you a letter, Chet. Still think it would have been easier on you since there was nothing you could do about it anymore. You always wanted to let me down easy, Libby. The judge was right telegraphing me. I was sure that's the way you'd feel about it, my boy. Uh, exactly what happened? They found your father face down in the corral, with an arrow between his shoulder blades. Arrow? It was an arrow, all right, Chad. Regular engine arrow. Minute I heard, I rode right out to his ranch myself. No Indians around Dos Rios. No bad Indians. The folks around here don't think so. They blamed it on John Tallfeather, the Indian who used to work for your father. John Tallfeather was as fond of my father as, well, as I am. What's more, John was a Choctaw, and Choctaws haven't used arrows since the Mexican Wars. Where is John? I'm going out and tell him I don't believe all that loose-mouthed gossip. John Tallfeather's dead, Chad. They strung him up the same night your father was found. Strung him up? Who strung him up? A mob. A mob headed by your father's own neighbors, Rafe and Breck Kincaid. Kincaid? Oh, I should have known. This is no backwoods we're living in any longer. It may be the frontier, but it's the frontier of civilization. I've heard you make that speech before, my boy. For all the good it does. This country will never be anything but a lawless wilderness until men learn to respect the due processes of law. Why do they think I left the ranch and went off to school? We know, Chad. We agree with you. But while there are people around like the Kincaids, what are you going to do? I'm going to do something, and you can bet on that. Now don't go flying off the handle, young man. The Kincaids are gunfighters, both of them. A lot worse than that if they lynched poor John Tallfeather. And if there's any law in this country at all, they're going to pay for it. If you and Libby will excuse me, Judge, I'll leave my bags here. Of course, Chad, but where are you going? 
To start with, down to the livery stable. Renting myself a horse. <laughs> Not only can you have a horse and the best horse the livery stable provides, but you can have money in a bottle. What am I saying? <laughs> and the shirt right off my back. <laughs> uh, Cherokee, you haven't changed one bit. You sound just the way you did when, when I met you for the first time, peddling genuine Cherokee rattlesnake oil off the back of that big wagon. <laughs> yes, Chad, you remember, don't you? Sorry. Now, if you just gather around closer, friends, I want to call your attention to this little preparation I hold here in my hand. <laughs> this little bottle is sold regularly for three dollars everywhere. Now, you want to know what this little article does, and I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. It removes warts, blemishes, bunions, and freckles. Cures colds, rheumatism, Whoa, polar. whoa there, you old horse thief. Horse thief? Uh, your Honor, I'll amend my complaint. I'll just make it Dr. Cherokee O'Bannon. Thank you, counsel. Objections to stay. <laughs> Come on, I'll get you a horse. Yes, indeed. One of the quietest, gentlest, broken-down hay burners of God for a fancy pants city lawyer. <laughs> if you know what's good for you, O'Bannon, you won't call me fancy pants. Don't worry, Chad. I've seen you ride. I've got a good nag for you. But do you mind, my boy, if, uh... Well, if, uh... If what? I'd like to ride along with you, if it's all right with you. Well, come along, Cherokee. I'd enjoy having your company. Now, if you'll just get the horses, I'd like to be on my way. Well, Chad, there's your ranch. You can see it right through them aspens. Hasn't changed much, has it? No, not a bit. There's the creek and the cottonwoods where I used to swim when I played hooky for... Oh, oh boy, hold it. What's up? What's up? What's stopping for? Uh, unless I'm mistaken, and I don't think I am, someone's moved our wire. Our fence used to run along the other side of the creek up to that saddle rock. Sure, it used to. But it doesn't anymore. I thought you do. Do what? Well, last spring, there was a big rock slide right over there. Fill the old creek bottom with rocks and change the course of the stream. So your father sold that little strip to the kid and Kay. Are you sure, Cherokee? Because without water, there's a quarter of a section over here wouldn't raise gophers. Now, the way I heard it, on account of you moving upstate to be a lawyer, your father was selling off his cattle. Didn't care about the water. Selling off? Well, that's ridiculous. It wasn't a month ago he wrote me to go over to the stock show at the Capitol and see if I couldn't find him a new Hereford breeding bull. Wow. Well, I'll be a squaw engine's off I sure wouldn't be buying any bull if he was giving up ranching now, would he? Don't think he would. Come on, Cherokee. Turn that pony around. We're riding over and paying a call on Rafe and Breck Kincaid. Get around there, you long-legged, loose-jointed shuffle cussy. Come on, let's be off! Neither Rafe nor Breck seemed surprised to see me. But they did seem a little shocked when I started to ask questions about this strip of land Cherokee said my father had sold them. Well, maybe shocked isn't the right word at that. They were indignant. Indignant and downright hostile. You mean to say you think I'm lying, Remington? I'm not meaning to say anything, Rafe. I just asked you and Breck a very simple question. What do you mean, simple question? You asked us to show you the deed your old man signed when we bought that property from him. I know what I ask, Breck, but I still have to see the deed. Why, you... I got a good mind... If you really had a good mind, Rafe, you wouldn't go reaching for your gun. I'm not wearing one. Yeah, I forgot. You're the holier-than-thou gent who didn't like the way your neighbors ran your hometown. You went away to college. Sure, he was too good for us. <laughs> I can force you to produce that deed, you know. Oh, you can well, you wouldn't like to try it, would you? I don't mean beat it out of you. Although I believe I still could. He believes he still could, Rafe. Whether you two realize it or not, we have a court in this county. And I could make you produce the deed in court. I just didn't think that would be a friendly thing to do. You're not getting no place trying to butter us up with that friendly talk. Ah, let it go, Brick. The deed's over in the table drawer. Get it and show it to Mr. High and Mighty. 
I'd appreciate it very much if you would. Your father would turn over in his grave. He knew what a duty he had for his son. The less you two have to say about my father, the better off we'll be. All of us. Here. Look for yourself. That's the deed. That's the deed, all right. Well, now you're satisfied? Yeah. I'm satisfied. The signature's a forgery. Why, you low-down mealy... Go on, on, Rafe. Squeeze trigger if you want to. I don't think even you would want to go into court for gunning down an unarmed man. Yeah? Well, who's to say you weren't packing a gun? Now, Rafe's right. He's got me as a witness. <laughs> You're a lawyer. You know what witnesses are, don't you? Chad, you called me a liar. You said I forged that deed. Nobody calls me them names and goes on living. And I imagine you killed men for a lot less, too. Well, if you got the salt to shoot while I'm standing in front of you... Honey, what's... Drop that gun, Rafe! Rafe is Cherokee. Chad must have left him outside. Yeah, I'd forgotten I had, but... Well, Rafe? You gonna let that shooting iron go or not? The uh, next one won't be just a warning. And even my Cherokee Indian rattlesnake ever... Oh, he'll never cure one from five bullet holes. Go on, Rafe. Cherokee's got the drop on you. That's better. Come on, Chad. It's time you were leaving. You're right, Cherokee. Go on, Slope. And the next time you come up here, I'm shooting you for trespassing. Thanks for your advice, Rafe. And for your help, too. I'll be seeing you again. Sue. Remington, next time I see you, you better be packing a gun. Because I will. And I'll be looking for you. I intend to be looking for you, too. Both of you. Adios. Doggone it, Rafe. If he goes around town and shooting off that big mouth of his... Shut up, Frank. Huh? I ain't afraid of no man who's scared to pack a gun. He had his chance while he was here and he throwed it. Yes, sir. I always knowed it. That one's yellow. Yellow clean through. <laughs> We'll return to the dramatic climax of Frontier Town in just about one minute. Frontier Town. Well, when we left the Kincaid's ranch, I was pretty firmly convinced that my father's signature had been forged on the deed under which the Kincaid's claimed title to the creek and that strip of land around it. Cherokee and I pounded leather and left a trail of dust all the way from the Kincaid's to Judge Fillmore's house in Dos Rios. But, Chad, are you sure? Why, Miss Libby, Chad, sure about this, and I am that my Cherokee Indian rattlesnake oil is an absolute positive cure for 89 ailments of man. <laughs> all the way from double pneumonia to hangnails. I'm even surer than that. I'm as sure as anyone can be. Why, even seeing the deed for the few seconds I did, you couldn't miss the even pressure of the pen on the paper. And no one writing normally writes that way. You mean to say it was traced? And it was traced or copied or... I just know that my father didn't write it there himself. I hate to sound like a judge, my boy, but do you think you're going to be able to prove it? Well, judge, I hate to sound like a lawyer, but I've either got to prove that or leave town. 
Now, of course, I'm a doctor, pardon expression, <laughs> not a lawyer, but it seems reasonable and sensible to me, Shad, my boy, that we go down and have a little talk with the warden, I, I mean the marshal. <laughs> it isn't often that I can agree with someone in Dr. O'Bannon's profession, but this time I think he's right. Well, Chad, if you'd like, we'll all go along with you. Look, Chad, the marshal must be in. That's his horse tied off in front. Good, because I'm in no mood to waste any time. You know what he means by that, Miss Libby? He's aiming on getting back upstate, not staying here. Oh, Chad, not really. I'm afraid so, Libby. This lynching, these threats from the Kincaids, nothing's changed here. It's still the same boisterous, belligerent frontier town. Well, now, Chad, it's not as bad as all that. Here, let me open the door for you. And uh, if you don't mind, I'll wait for you here outside. I always feel a little strange when the door closes behind me in the marshal's office. <laughs> With what's on your conscience, I'm not surprised. After you, Louie. Well, Chad Remington, I was expecting you'd come back to Dos Rios, but I'm downright sorry that it had to be under these circumstances. Oh, howdy, Judge, Miss Libby. Hello, Marshal. Marshal, uh, Chad would like to ask you a few questions about his father's death. My father's murder? You're sure right about that, son. That low-code engine hit him smack between the shoulder blades, like a target was painted there. I suppose you know the Choctaws gave up bow and arrow fighting years ago, Marshal. Of course they did. John Tallfeather reckoned that knowing it, we wouldn't blame it on him. But when I found that bow hidden under his bunk, I had him dead to rights. You found the bow? Well, I got it right here. That's the thing that done in your father. Thanks. You know, it takes a mighty strong man to bend this bow. <laughs> John Tallfeather not only was old, but he'd been sick for years. Uh, well, he had enough strength left to pull it once. Marshal, how is it since you found this evidence you didn't arrest John and bring him in here? Well, well, they, uh, well, there was uh, three or four boys with me when I rode out to your father's place, and then the Kincaid brother joined us. And, well, I reckon there's no reason with a bunch of angry men, especially when right's on their side... In other words, you just stood aside, let him take your suspect and string him up? Suspect nothing. I tell you, we had him dead to rights. Well, you wouldn't have had him dead to rights in my court without more proof than that. Oh, no use getting excited about it now, Judge. Did you find anything else that day, Marshal? No, I can't say that. I... By sinners, I did bring something else in that you probably want. Your dad's belt, holster, and gun. I got him right here in the desk. Yes, Marshal, I'd like to have his gun. Well, here you are, son. And I hope you understand. Yes, I'm starting to understand. A lot. I'll see you again soon, Marshal. Come on, Lippy. Oh, God, Chad, I almost went in to get you. Guess who just rolled into town? Never mind, I'll tell you, Rafe and Pat Cade. Were they looking for me? Could be, could be. That's good. Very good. Chad, you don't mean that you're going down. Make a target of myself for him, Libby? No. But I am going to strap this on. <laughs> don't look at me as though your eyes are going to pop out of your head, Libby. I'm fully grown now. I'm reasonably able to take care of myself. Chad, you'll be careful. I'm being doubly careful. I'm taking a bodyguard with me. If Cherokee and I find what I hope we'll find, you can get out your law books, Judge. Because we'll be having a case for you to try in your court. Mighty soon. With the Kincaid brothers in town, it certainly seemed safe to go back out to their ranch. When we got there, I headed straight for the desk where the so-called deed was kept while Cherokee started to ransack the rest of the house. Suddenly, I could hear Cherokee's heavy boots come pounding toward me from another room. Chad! Hey, Chad, you certainly played the right hunch. Look here. Where'd you find those, Cherokee? In a bedroll in the back room. This is only a few of them. There must be 20, 30 arrowheads back there. So John Tallfeather murdered my father, hmm? Those filthy, cold-blooded swine. Sure, the Kincaid's done. Hey, what's that you got there? That paper. 
Enough with those arrowheads to put the noose around the Kincaid's necks. Here, see, they bought some land from my father, all right, but not the piece down by the creek. Here's the deed for ten acres up on the north side next to their grove of jack pines. All they did was to copy his signature off this deed and trace it on the other. Yeah. Even I could see the difference when they're side by side. Well, Chad, I suppose now you're going back into town and call them out, eh? No, Cherokee, I'm not. I'm taking this evidence into the marshal and swearing out a warrant for their arrest. Huh? Well, you sound like you've been drinking rattlesnake oil. Why, them two would never let their cells be arrested? Oh, have they got everybody bluffed around here? Come on, Cherokee. We're getting back to town. <laughs> Come on, Cherokee. There are only two places we haven't been to, and... Well, there are the Kincaid's horses tied up in front of the Lucky Seven Casino. You see the brands, K. Barrow? You're darn right I do. Why, the bushwhacking buzzards? Go fetch the marshal. I'm waiting here to make sure they don't get away. <laughs> You can see them both from here, Marshal, at the faro table. Well, doggone it, Chad. This ain't no time to try to haul them to jail. They've been drinking. Well, them two is only enough cold sober. I'm sorry you don't like your job, Marshal. But maybe if you liked it a little better, it wouldn't be necessary to do things like this here in Dos Rios. No, you see here, Chad Remington. I don't take lip like that from no man. You'll be taking a lot more than that if you don't get busy. Now, come on. We're going inside. Well... But mark my words, we're not having no shooting scrapes. Marshal, if I were you, I'd start moving. Come on. Just keep walking, Marshal. <laughs> I'll bet another hundred. And if the house will take off the limit, I'll... Sorry to interrupt your game, Rafe, but your luck's just run out anyhow. Remember what I told you this morning? I said next time I saw you, I was going to... Rafe, I'm warning you. Don't try scratching leather. Well, look who's here. The dude brought the law with him. You want something, Marshal? Well, Chad here sent for me. Says he's got some kind of proof. You killed his father. What? So he thinks I killed his father, does he? Well, if I thought someone shot my father, I wouldn't need any lawman to take care of him. <laughs> We've got laws to handle things like that. They're plenty good enough for me. Marshal? I got an idea. I just bloody have. I just bloody have. Since Chad wants us arrested, why don't you deputize him? Then being the law he thinks so high of, he can take us down to the calaboose. If he thinks he can. Rafe, now, I didn't come in here looking for trouble, and you being on the prod ain't helping me none. Marshal, are you going to arrest the Kincaids? Uh, sure, sure. But if uh, they ain't going to come peaceful, then, well, I'm going back and get me a couple of deputies. All right, Marshal. I don't intend to tell you how to run your job. Go on. I'm going to stay here and wait for you. Okay, Chad, but don't you go stirring up no trouble while I'm gone. Him? Stir up trouble? <laughs> don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that marshal's a card, ain't he? Real brave hombre. Couldn't wait to run out. I didn't run out. Remington, this morning you called me a liar and a crook. Now you come in here calling me a murderer. That's right, Rafe. I called you a liar, a crook, and a murderer. And we haven't even started, Jad. Mister, I got only one thing to tell you. Go for your gun. Sorry. That's one piece of advice I can't take. You're right, Rafe. This Jasper's yellow. Sure he is. Yellow. Clean through. You're gonna find out, Rafe, if I am or not. Yeah? How? Oh. You gonna hit me with a wet handkerchief or something? You ain't got the salt to clear your holster. The only time I draw a gun is in self-defense. I don't know why you don't fill your hand. 
Why should I? Well, because I called you a liar. I've called you a crook, and I'm calling you a cold-blooded, sneaking murderer. Well, even I wouldn't let a man call me that to my face. Go on. You got quite a reputation for slinging guns. What's stopping you now? Last you get out of here before I blow you out. To blow me out, you'll have to draw. And I'm waiting. Rafe, I knew you were everything miserable a man could be, but I never thought you were as spineless as a gutless coward. Why, you dirty... Let him go first, you still beat him to it. Tad, duck, crack behind you. Get him. So now we're hanging, will you? Break it. Drop that gun. Break oh, it. Drop it. But before I have to break you. <laughs> All right, Frank. Now we don't need the marshal. The one Kincaid that's left is going to jail anyhow. <laughs> Well, Ted? Well, Libby? It's just that... Well, I hate saying goodbye. I hate saying goodbye to, uh, everyone? Well, you were all right, won't you? Well, I might. Not that it'll do much good, I'm afraid, Libby. Not that it'll do... Ted, what do you mean? Well, I always heard women knew everything by intuition. You mean that... That there's someone else upstate? Someone you're going to marry? Upstate? Now, who mentioned upstate? Now, with Rafe dead and Breck and Kate sentenced, you're leaving town again, aren't you? Well, yes. I'm going about 12 miles out of town, Libby. I'm moving into my father's ranch. Oh, Chad, you're not. I sure am. And I guess there's enough trouble around Dos Rios for another good lawyer. Yep, Libby, I, I've come home. Oh. Well, you ain't never going to get home if you don't get started, you say, Trust <laughs> Romeo. How about inviting me for dinner tomorrow night, huh? Oh, Chad. Chad, of course. Well, then, we'll, we'll be seeing you, Libby. Hey, get started, Cherokee. We got miles to cover. Hey, up there, boy. Make tracks. And don't forget, Libby, my weakness is sample five. Frontier Town, starring Tex Chandler, came to you from Hollywood. The series is directed by Paul Franklin and supervised by Joel Murcott. The music is composed and played by Bob Mitchell. Be sure to be with us again, this time one week from today, for another fine action-adventure story with your favorite young Western star, Tex Chandler. Frontier Town is a Bruce Ells production. (laughs) 